Hey there, and welcome to this video about unit testing in Java. I thought I'd make this uh, introduction video about how you do unit testing as a general. And I'm going to be using uh, Java for this and uh, NetBeans as an IDE, but this should be applicable to other IDEs if you're using IntelliJ or Eclipse, or also the concept should be usable if you're using other programming languages uh, like C Sharp or C++. And unit testing is a really fundamental part of, of the testing process. And it's one of the most basic things that you can do. And also, uh, it is one of the cheapest tests that you can do because you will actually do this to test each unit or class or component in your software. So if you can do this, if you can actually get into a habit of making unit tests when you are programming, then you will end up having better quality software. And it is it is cheap to do unit testing because you have not released the software, you have not started any beta testing, you have not sent it to any users. Um, so it's really, really easy to fix the errors. Because if you are doing a beta test with uh, 500,000 people and they report a bug in your software then you actually need to track it all down to the class design maybe and to do a unit test and it can become really really expensive to handle it so how do we do this but uh, we have a really simple class we have a calculator that has the add and subtract and multiply and divide so that's a pretty basic class we can see it is just a bunch of static methods here we have integer values we're gonna add the two numbers we're gonna subtract the numbers we're going to multiply them and the divide is a little bit more complex because we're checking if the if the second number is zero and if it is zero we will throw an illegal argument exception because we cannot divide by zero so how can we use unit testing to actually test this and of course in your software probably your class is, is going to be more complex and you will have more business logic um, but this is just to give you an idea of how you can actually apply unit test Okay, so we have our calculator, we have uh, our main method, and I just made a small test here where we can, I'm just testing whether, whoop, 1,500, that should be 1,500. Okay, so how can we actually test this? Because you should try to do unit testing all the places or some of the places where you are printing out to the console if you're using system of print line or console log because it's much easier to do the unit testing because when you have written a well-designed unit test you can repeat it for the rest of your development cycle so it's going to be one time only if it is well designed but of course you can change the unit test so let's go in here and see in netbeans because we have the source packages here and if we create a new uh, a new folder here let's just call this uh, test and uh, let's do it like this. Boom. So we will get test packages here, and we have the default one. And we can see in our source packages, we have fun with unit testing. This is where our two files reside in here, our two Java files. So let's create a new class here. Oh, sorry, let's create a new package first. A new Java package, and let's just call them fun with unit testing. Let's just keep it the same name here. And because we need to actually use an extra framework to make this work, we need to import uh, a couple of um, a couple of Java libraries and the one we need is primarily JUnit. This is the one that uh, will give us all the functionality for testing. So if we head over to um, to test libraries we can see we haven't got anyone yet so we can right click and say add library and then we get a list of available uh, libraries here we can see we have JUnit different versions and uh, there is JUnit 5 and I'm just going to use JUnit 4 because there is some um, issues with NetBeans the newest version of NetBeans regarding if you're using an AND project with version 5 so I'm going to be using JUnit 4. So we just, and I also need another one. We need the Hamcrest. Whoop. So Hamcrest 1.3 and JUnit 4. Add these two libraries. So now we have them. So next we need to create a new class. 
we need to create the actual test class and an easy way to do this is to hit new and then we will yeah you can go to other if it's not available in the list and then we select unit test and we're going to choose JUnit. You can also use test engine if you're using that, but I'm just going to take JUnit testing here and we go next. And then we need to define the, the class of names. Let's call this calculator test. And we're going to select the package here. That's okay. We can select what should be generated, test initializer, finalizer, and all that stuff there and hit next. So now we will get kind of a, the boilerplate for our test class here and we can see that it's in the same package here and we have imported all of the necessary uh, library imports here we can see the assertions we have some setup uh, that we that we can use so we have calculator test and we have different annotations before class after class before if we need to set up something if we need to tear down maybe we have objects that we need to set up we need to create uh, then you can do this in in these uh, in these uh, methods here. And finally, in the bottom here, we can see the actual test methods. You can see to do add test methods here. So all we need to do is basically to create a, a public void method and then mark it with the test annotation. So let's get on with this and see if we can actually uh, make some tests here. So we do public void. And let's just uh, start out with test add. And then we are going to mark this with test. That's good here. Yep. So now we can actually start using this. And then in a unit test, we have special methods called assertions where we can actually test if something is equal among other. So there's a whole bunch of different methods here. We can see array equals, uh, normal equals, not equals, assert false, a whole bunch of cool methods that you can use to actually assert if something is not null or null or same or something else. And we're going to be using assert equals. So we have different overloads for this. We have uh, long and we have uh, object, string, float. So if we go with this one here, we can see that if we, uh, and if we just hover over this, oh, if we can see here, it will say expected and actual. So the expected is what we actually need to be putting in here. So if we do the addition, let's just put in 2000. So now we need to make use of our calculator and we're gonna use add. And so let's say we add 1,000, two times. So that should be 2,000 in the result. So now we've made a really, really simple test of a one method, the one we got in here. And we save the file and we can go to run and test project. So then it should build the project and it's gonna, you can see we have test results here in the bottom. Now we can see test add passed. So that's cool. So if we just make, let's try to provoke this guy a little bit here. So we say 2001 and we do the same thing here and we can hit whoop. We can do Alt F6 to run the test again. We can also click the bottoms down here. So now we can see immediately here that failed expected 2001 but it was 2000 okay so we can see it actually has some implications if we change the input here so we put down this right so now we have a good test here we can reuse this test test it all over again if we want to do that so that's cool so that took about five minutes max one minute maybe i don't know to do this test here and we can reuse it i know it's pretty pretty simple okay so uh, if we do this for for the other cases, so we do test test subtract, and we do multiply divide. So the subtract we change this to our subtract here. So if we take 
1000 and we subtract it, it should be zero, maybe. If we multiply it, let's just take 10. Let's take 10 times 20. Yep, that should be 200. And if we to go with test divide and we do, let's just go with 20. Yeah, let's do this five times. Should be four. So now we have, uh, we can see we need to actually, so that's the, that is the potential danger of copy paste here. So multiply, whoop, and we need to go with divide. So we have test add, subtract, multiply, divide, okay. And that should be 2000, that should be zero, that should be 200, that should be four. So let's have a look how our tests behave. Alt F6. And we can see we got four tests now that is passing. So that is really cool. That is really awesome and we can, we can reuse them. So let's imagine that we had an error in our calculator. Let's imagine we made a mistake here. If we just actually made a mistype here in the divide, we made multiply instead. What would happen with our unit testing? Let's retest again. So now we can see that, okay, if something is wrong here with the test divide. We got 100, but it expected four. Hmm. This is strange, all right? So, boom. This will probably lead us into looking into this class here. So what is wrong? And we will take a look at it and say, okay, it was 100. Ah, maybe we found it here. Okay, so I fixed the bug here. Whoop. And we can run the unit test again and retest it. See, uh, okay, that's nice. Brilliant. Okay, so that was, uh, we actually tested all the methods here. But if we need to do this fully, we have this uh, throw new illegal argument exception. We need to test what happened if we actually provide a zero in the second number here. Because then we need to check if the class actually throws an illegal argument exception. So let's have a look here. How do we do this? Well, we can make an extra test down here where we put test and then we can actually provide something extra information expected. And then we can put in illegal. Whoop. Let's see here. Illegal argument exception. Oop. Public void, test, divide, divide by zero. All right, so we have an extra test case. This is kind of for the illegal input if we provide a zero. So basically what we need to do here is we need to have a try catch block because we need to try this out first. So we will do, uh, not the math, I don't know why I keep typing this, calculator and we do divide. So now we do t 10 divided by zero. So that is bad. All right, so we have a valid call here in terms of the compiler. We don't get any errors here right at the moment here. And uh, if we get an error, we can actually catch it. We're just gonna put a finally clause here. So now we're testing what will actually happen if we divide by zero. Okay, so we try this code and we expect to get this illegal argument exception. So let's see what happens. So now we can see that oop, test divide by zero passed. All right, so it actually threw the divide by zero or the divide by uh, zero illegal argument exception. So we got the exception that we expected in the test. All right, so let's see what happens if we don't get the exception, if there is something wrong maybe in here. So let's imagine that we do 10 divided by one. This will not give us the illegal argument exception. So what will happen in the unit testing? Will it tell us? Yeah, it will. You can see it failed. It actually tells us that it expected the exception, but it did not get any exception because we didn't hit this if clause here. So the unit testing uh, will actually tell us if it is wrong. All right, oh, that was a mistake there. 
so we have a past here all right i think this kind of concluded what i wanted to show you here um hopefully in a in an understandable way or uh, simple way uh unit testing is really really important and it, it is cheap and it it is important because you can actually catch a lot of bugs with this but uh, it might be it can be tricky to write good tests so it will take some experience to learn how to write good unit tests and if you have more complex probably more complex uh, business logic than this uh, you need to have more tests for maybe one methods if you want to test it fully all right so thank you for watching and uh, i hope you make this work have fun with this bye bye